So today we're gonna mount this anvil to our new wooden stand. So I was really perplexed this morning after spending all that time and trouble to get everything perfectly flat. What I find out, and what is always seems to be the problem, is the floors are not flat. When the floors are not flat, then you get a wobble. And having a wobble makes me crazy. It's just wasted energy. And so I was moving it around and, and you know you get little pieces of bark dust or sawdust or a screw or something underneath of it, and then you're fighting it all the time. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna come up with a solution for this. And I had all these ideas for these really clever like wedging systems that slid in the tracks and all of this stuff when the solution was right in front of me and it was so simple. My subscriber, Mark Ante Antestic, excuse me, Antestic, contacted me and said, I know how to fix that problem. My granddad has been a carpenter. I think he said he was 89. He's done everything around the shop and he has a solution that makes, that will prevent that from ever happening again. He said, what you do is that you take the bottom of your block, this being the block here, and you put a concave in it, meaning you dish out the center of it. That way, anything that's, that's in the center that's causing it to wobble, it doesn't make any difference. It kind of gets pushed to the middle and you're only touching on the out, outside sides of it. That is a brilliant solution. And you know, the funny thing, when she mentioned that, Mark, I have seen like in old historical uh, museums and things, blocks like that that did had, have concaves cut into them and I never even thought about it until now, but it makes perfect sense. So how do we make a concave in such a big old piece of hard wood? Well, no doubt we could use some tools like this. I've got some nice big timber framing gouges. We could work that in there. That would take a very long time. I've got this beautiful hand forged hand gouge. We could do that, right? But again, that would take a very long time. So what we need to do is we need to come up with a solution that's going to do this quickly, but still do a nice job. So what I think I'll do is use the chainsaw. Boy, that gets it done faster than you can say Jack Robinson. Now, what's gonna be the best way to knock these guys out? This is actually not working very good. I think we could do something that's not working very good. This is good for a little bowl, but not for this. Let's, let's try a chisel. Put a big old Robert Sorby two inch framing chisel on it there. Let's see if that does. I'm gonna earn it. Boy, that is a grizzled old tough piece of wood. That, sh that should come out of there easier than that. Might have to cut smaller chunks. Wonder why that's so hard. Let's try it this way. These are smaller here. Hmm. That's not such an effective way there either. So as the Grony Weaver so elegantly put it in Galaxy Quest, well, you'll have to watch the movie to get that reference. So there's our concave. Not very pretty, is it? But uh, it's on the bottom, right? Oh, that's a great idea. That's 
Let's flip it over and see if that doesn't solve the problem of the wobble. Check it out. <laughs> I love it. Rock solid, no more wobble, even sitting on a, on a crooked slab. That is fantastic. Good job, Mark, tell your grandpa, tell your grandpa thank you. Uh, I love learning those little tidbits like that. You know, it makes you wonder why, why couldn't I have figured that out? I would, I never even dreamed of that. I would, I would have never dreamed of it. So, well, file that little bit of knowledge away, huh? So before we go any further, we've got to seal the ends up on that, uh, that block or that it's going to start checking. It happens fast. So, uh, got some beeswax here. I keep this old, uh, that's an old coffee can I got from my granddad, from his things. Um, I use it to melt beeswax. I got an old, old worn out paintbrush here. So we'll uh, knock a few chunks off here. Whoop. I love this beeswax. I take little bits of it from my beehive and uh, put it on the wood stove when I'm working in the shop because it just smells so delightful. It's pretty pretty good size area, so it's gonna take a, a fair amount. Though there's just nothing like the real beeswax, so for this sort of thing. I'll just put this big block in there because I, you know, I use it on stuff all the time. It's really nice on tool handles. You mix it with a little boiled in seed oil, you know, a real small amount. Kind of, you know, I forget the exact ratio, but it's a, it's a pretty, it's a lot less beeswax than boiled in seed oil. And man, it makes a, a nice finish on your shovel handles. You apply that a couple years in a row and with the oil from your hands over the years, man, you just, you get a, a seasoned tool handle that is just like butter. Like this one right here, you know, this is one that I've been working on. This is a, this is a chisel handle that I made for, uh, I think I made that for my corner chisel. I put that little that, uh, iron collar on there. That's just a piece of water pipe on there. But uh, there's, there's several handles that I haven't, uh, or I've got tools that I don't have handles for, but this one here, it's got such a nice long taper on it that it fits a large variety of these handles like this here you don't even even fit like that so it's kind of a nice universal handle until I get around to making handles for all of these but you can see here that was a raw um, Tennessee hickory and I haven't used it very much with my hands and you can just tell that it's it's pretty new it's still kind of it feels really rough in the hand but you take this here for example you know this is what I've used for well, for almost 10 years on the original handle and it has that look on it. That's, that's lots and lots of coats of beeswax and linseed oil and, and just usage. It has that really nice weathered look and it's, a, it's the same wood. While we're waiting for that beeswax to cook down, some of you have seen this before. I showed it quite some years ago. This is really a beautiful piece. This, uh, this gouge here, or an as, is it considered a, an, a round as? I forget exactly what they call it. Was made for me by one of my young subscribers who was getting into blacksmithing. He hand forged this for me. Look at his, he's got his maker's mark in there. See that? He's got kind of a spider web design. He sent that to me a few years ago. Isn't that beautiful? That's pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Looks like it's got a little rust on it there. I made this handle out of an old uh, cut off axe handle that was really old, that belonged to my grandfather. A straight handle would be better, but it's not too bad. That's a beautiful tool, isn't it? So there's no question that the verdict is in as far as putting the iron collars on the anvil stand pretty much unanimous on that. I thought saw maybe one or two people saying maybe cut a rectangle or an octagon on it, but uh, 
uh, most of you said leave it like it is the extra weight you're gonna need the extra weight and put those heavy collars on there some said two some said three and I couldn't agree more that's exactly what I'm gonna do I, I looked around through all my scrap piles and my junk and I I don't have anything because I think it needs to be real really thick robust like let's say uh, at least a one inch collar and uh, the thickness needs to be I'd say quarter inch you know thick really thick so when you turn those 90s up and put those tightening rods on there they're not going to distort um, and so I'm gonna I've got fire drill tonight uh, and I'll go down um, an hour early to the scrap metal yard and I'll pick up um, a couple pieces of that that flat uh, banding and then we'll bend those around there and forge them maybe forge them even for kind of forge them in place so that uh, you get those chars those burns on the on the wood that look I think that look kind of nice and then several other people pointed out like uh, I think it was gravel trucking was first was um, uh, putting this loop for your, your hand your hammer handles and your tools and your tongs and such on the side and that's a great idea too um, I'm gonna definitely do that so I'll maybe I'll pick up some scrap metal I think I might have a few scraps for that so so I did talk to um, um, the Wood Forge folks uh, via an email this morning and I uh, just was inquiring about when the forge was going to come because if they were going to send uh, mine out here pretty soon I would use that on the beehive tools but if not we'll just use my coal forge here and uh, they told me that it should be here by the end of the week so today being Tuesday we might just um, might, it might be here in time so I've got that anvil exactly where I wanted it. So I traced around it with a pencil and put the H on there for the horn because I want to, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to see that through the wax. I wanted to kind of, it seemed to fit right there the best. So let's flip it over and, and wax the bottom first. That'll do it right there. You don't want to, you don't want to overcook it. There's no reason to. If it start, when it starts to smoke like that, you know you're. You need to sh turn down the heat. You need to think about using it here. So rolling that chainsaw around there like that, that'd be a good way. You could do a bird bath like that if you had a stump, couldn't you? Oh, that's nice. It just goes right into the pores of the wood. That's going to make that dry nice and slow now. It's not going to, not all that, it's not going to dry unevenly. If you, if you go to a place that has really expensive, nice hardwoods, like uh, for carpent, or, oh, you know, like furniture makers and cabinet makers and such, you'll often see that the ends of the wood's painted uh, with a, oh, they probably have something special. They don't use beeswax, you bet that. Beeswax is the best, but it couldn't, it would just be too expensive. But they use some sort of a paint. Look at that, isn't that nice? Make sure you get in there real good. Go, go over it and get all those dry spots. dries pretty quickly when it cools down. Well, it might be, there's a fire in a neighboring county. They're calling out for mutual aid. We haven't been tapped out yet, but I might, might not be finishing this video today. I might be going out there on that. The other side's not gonna take as much wax as this, because this, this has got these pretty raggedy cuts on it with all that, that chainsaw on there. Don't wait too long to, to do this. Uh, you'll be quick, you'll be surprised. Already these checks are start, starting, to, starting to show through and I, of course, did this last night. Wish we had smell o vision Wish you could smell this. If you've never had the had a, a, a real beeswax candle just uh, 
regular like fake wax type of candles. Uh, boy, you ought to get one as a special treat. You want to get a special treat for your your wife or girlfriend and then do a dinner or a mystery date, get a, a couple of those beeswax candles. They are uh, they're just lovely. The way they smell and the way they look and the way they burn, it's just not like any other candles, nothing like it. There, now we can put our put our anvil on there. I can still see where I had it. Oh, that's nice. Everything is absolutely rock solid. Rock solid. Look at that beautiful color that wax puts on there. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. It just gives me a, the feel and look of it and the smell of it. it just gives me, a, gives me goosebumps. It's so nice. Imagine if that was a giant block of beeswax. That'd last you a long time, wouldn't it? That's nice. No wobble. Stuck on there solid. So now we got to figure out a way to mount this to the new stump. Let me paraphrase a subscriber's comment this morning. Are you freaking kidding me? I just spent 16 minutes watching a video how to put an anvil on a stump and you haven't even done it yet? This is ridiculous. Well, <laughs> it is totally ridiculous. You know, here's the truth of the matter of there. Uh, of the, how many of you out there need me to show you or anyone else to show you how to put an anvil on the stump? You don't need to. There's better men than I am at it. You know, I have a about a biannual YouTube crisis where I where I wonder if I should do this anymore and uh, do up a video and and you guys always encourage me and the the thing that, that I heard loud and clear uh, from uh, my last crisis video was that we're not watching your channel to learn how to do these things you're not actually not that great at doing them there's always there's someone much better if you want to we want to watch someone build an anvil stand we can go find someone a whole lot better than you to do it and that's true the reason why we watch you is because it, it, it's it's entertaining it, it makes us um, it, it makes me feel like like I'm there it makes me feel like um, I'm in the shop and I'm doing the project and and that's what you can do you you know you're not the best carpenter you're not the best machinist you're not the best mechanic um, you but you are entertaining so that, <laughs> I, I hear it loud and clear and that's that's just fine with me because it takes a lot of pressure off because I when I first started doing the channel I was trying I think everyone you don't really know your way but you try it I used to try to be really super professional and and like I knew everything and I, and I don't know everything I'm and I, what I do with the channel is uh, is bring you guys along so we can kind of do it together all of this stuff is just um, it's fun it's a place to hang out and it's um, that's it so it makes it much more enjoyable for me it took me a long time to realize that uh, and a lot of pressure off it we don't have to be perfect uh, we can make mistakes the only thing that's important is that we don't give up and just keep on doing and get up off the couch and, and get out there and do something do the best you can and the first one may not be perfect but the second one will be better so so I'm going to, uh, I'll go pick up the steel and we'll do the collars on the next one. And if I drag this out long enough, maybe that wood-fired anvil will be here just in time. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.